good evening one and all we welcome you all to the international webinar series on holistic health well being sustainable development 2022 2023 commemorating azadi ka amrit mahotsav nation celebrating 75 years of independence and united nation sustainable development goals 2015 to 2030 as part of awareness and campaign and commemorating india's g20 presidency and world health month 2023 in collaboration with sri holistic health foundation india and sri research institute center for art sciences and before we start our sessions let's take the blessings of almighty the blessings of almighty we shall continue with today's session today uh, we are having few commemorations like national librarian day and today is also day of mushroom and go fly a kite day National Bean Counter Day, and National Health Care Decisions Day, and National Orchids Day, and Save the Elephants Day, and Teach Your Daughter to Volunteer Day. and world semicolon day world voice day and there are many days at any point of day or any point of time we have at least uh, some 22 minimum a 20 to 50 somewhere around 30 40 days commemorated every day basically we are uh, picking up uh, very few and we are discussing due to time constraints and we are also selecting uh, which are very much related to us so let's uh, look at world voice day today is world voice day which is devoted to celebrating the phenomenon of human voice and raising awareness on issues affecting the health of the voice so this day aims to demonstrate how vital the human voice is in people's daily interaction the voice is critical to effective and healthy human communication so this day helps bring global awareness to the need to prevent voice problems rehabilitate troubled voices train artistic voices and research the function and application of the human voice one main goal of the world voice day is to encourage all owners and users of voices to learn how to take care of their voices as well as how to seek help 
were necessary and to support research on, on the voice. So the human voice has existed for as long as humans ourselves have been in existence. A comprehensive history of the origins and use of human voice for millennia of human history, many prove arduous, if not outright possible. However, the biological construct theories of human voice are a good ex explanation of how our voice works. And for this discussion, we think that would be more than it. The voice consists of sounds pronounced or produced by a human being through the vocal tract. Some of the action resulting from this includes talking, singing, laughing, crying, screaming, shouting, and humming, among other things. The voice frequency of human beings plays specifically important role in production of suns in which specific vocal folds or cords make up the primary source of the sound. Other mechanisms of human sound production from the same body region usually involves the production of unvoiced consonants, clicks, whistling, and whispering. The mechanism for generating or producing sound frequency from the human voice is divided into lungs. The voice box, vocal folds within the larynx, larynx and the articulators. For the sound production equation to work, the lungs must produce enough airflow and pressure to create vibrations in the vocal folds through its pump action. The vocal folds then work with this air pressure from the lungs to develop audible pulses that make up lung sound source. The langial muscles adjust the length and tension of the vocal folds to determine the specific pitch and tone. The articulators are the parts of the vocal tract above the larynx, which comprise the tongue, palate, cheek, and lips. They filter the sound produced by the from the larynx and to certain extents can strengthen or weaken lang langial airflow as a sound source by interacting with it. The first known opera, Jacopo Paris Daphne is performed in 1598. Bajan, American hip hop artist and beatboxing pioneer, Doug E. Fresh is born in 1996. The reality TV music show, The Voice airs the first time in April in 2011. In 2016, Turkish singer Alpasian Durmus set the world record for the longest vocal pitch by holding a note for 1 minute and 52 seconds in 2016. So, not only just humans, birds have two voices, voice boxes called syrinx so that some birds can make more than one sound at a time. And for the sound production equation to work, the lungs must produce enough airflow and pressure to create vibrations in the vocal folds through its pump action. The vocal folds then work with air pressure from the lungs to create audible pulses that make up lung sound source. So on this, World Voice Day, you could lend your voice to a voiceover. If you ever have been told that you have a fantastic voice, here's your chance to cash on it. You can also record a video of yourself, whether or not you really can. Upload online just for fun. And here's a, an opportunity to attend an opera, which is usually a high society activity. But there you can get to see human voice being used at its best. It is also an opportunity to dress up. The human vocal cords, cords are composed of two infolds of the mucous membrane. When the boy's voice breaks or deepens, it results from lungs thickening. Singer Tim Storms is said to have such a low voice that he can sing the lowest possible notes that are audible only to the elephants. The first anyone 
the first time anyone set a record for the longest sustained vocal note was in 2009 the male human voice is said to be capable of a vocal range of 600 feet when out in the open air our voices helps us communicate better having a voice is one of the easiest ways to communicate we can do this through speaking shouting crying etc our voice is significantly contribute to the music even though there are musical instruments voices enhance melodies our personalities are best portrayed through our voices and our voices express our personality so with this we shall conclude world voice day and today is also world semicolon day in us observed can be related to the non profit organization project semicolon which defines itself as being dedicated to presenting hope and love for those who are struggling with mental illness suicide addiction and self injury and exists to encourage love and inspire the project leadership and membership of the organization are devoted to achieving lower suicide rates in the us and all over the world although they are not themselves psychiatric professionals nor they are trained in mental health they help by recommending emergency contact helplines the movement also welcomes the embraces people holding different beliefs or religions the world health organization defines mental health as a state of well-being in which individual realizes his or her abilities can cope up with the normal stress of life can work productively and fruitfully and can contribute to his or her community mental health comprises subject to well-being autonomy competence and self actualization of an individual's own intellectual and emotional acumen among others all an individual's ability to enjoy life and create a balance between life activities and efforts to achieve psychological resilience it is also an indication of mental health in the mid 1880s it was a william switzer who first coined the term mental hygiene which is an antecedent to modern contemporary perspective on the promotion of positive mental health isaac ray former president and co-founder of the american psychiatric association further defined mental hygiene as the art of preserving the mind against all incidents and influences calculated to deteriorate its qualities impair its energies or derange its movements in american history it was believed that the individuals with mental illness were religiously punished the belief carried on more for most of the 18th century along with the dehumanizing treatment of such individuals from 1840 to 1880 dorothy or dix received the official backing of the federal government to institute over 30 state psychiatric hospitals these hospitals would later be understaffed and rumored to violate human rights clifford Bittingham Beers was a forerunner in the development of mental hygiene movement based on his own traumatic experience with mental health care he went on to publish a mind that found itself in 1908 so william schwetzer is born uh, the physician who first coined the term mental hygiene in 1797 Dorothy Dix who was at the forefront of mental hygiene movement in in 1800s was born in 1802 project semicolon a non-profit organization that caters to mental health issues is created by Ami Bluel in 2030 the first ever world semicolon day is observed in 2060 So Project Semicolon is a non-profit organization that is dedicated to presenting hope and love for those who are struggling with mental illness, suicide, addiction and self-injury 
and exists to encourage love and inspire. The leadership and membership of the organization are devoted to achieving lower suicide rates in the US and all over the world. So Project Semicolon was founded by Amy Bluell in 2013, 10 years after her father committed suicide. Unfortunately, Bluell herself would ultimately commit suicide in 2017. So the idea of World Semicolon Day is to decrease the number of suicides. Perhaps you know someone who battles with mental health. Check on them to see how they are doing. You might just save a life with a simple gesture. You can simply educate someone, a friend, child, colleague, or co-passenger, share your knowledge about the importance of protecting our mental health and getting health where necessary. So post mental health care tips, articles, infographics, etc. to engage others to preserve their mental health. And suicide is ranked number 10 for leading causes of death in the US. And an average of one person commits suicide every 11 minutes in the US. Studies show that women are three times more likely to commit suicide than men. Half of the suicides are firearm related according to the statistics in US. There is no specific demography for suicide. Suicide can happen anywhere to anyone. And World Semicolon Day is an opportunity to reach out and spread hope to anyone might feel like they don't have an alternate way out of where there is enough going through. So see what this day to help. It encourages suicide survivors a platform through which to stand one another in solidarity. This is one of the ways we can combat the problem. And it also helps bring about awareness regarding mental health issues and suicide. It also offers ways to manage and prevent these. With this, we shall conclude World Semicolon Day. Today is also Save the Elephant Day which is observed every year on April 16th. Its purpose is to raise awareness about the predicament of elephants whose population has continued to decline quite noticeably. Elephants are the largest existing land animals that are spread across Africa and Asia. Recent studies estimate that there are now over 40 uh, four lakh elephants across the African continent. And although the situation differs from country to country, it cannot be denied that the giant mammals are in decline on a continent-wide scale. Human activities such as poaching for ivory remain a significant reason for the decline. Save the Elephant Day seeks to change this upsetting trend by educating people about elephants and the predicament they face encouraging everyone to do their bit in helping to save elephants from extinction. Organizations across the world have worked together to tackle some of the major threats elephant populations face. In 1989, the international commercial trade of ivory was banned. The Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species site secured an agreement among its member states to ban the international ivory trade. In 2016, China, which is the world's largest ivory market, called for the ban of all ivory sales within the country. On December 20, 2018, the UK Ivory Act 2018 received loyal, royal assent after being passed by the British Parliament. The act may be extended to include hippos, walruses, and narwhals in the future. In 2012, Save the Elephant Day was established by the Elephant Reintroduction Foundation in Thailand. Together, 
to Patrika Sims, a Canadian filmmaker. The launch of this worldwide initiative in 2012 saw the release of the Return, of the Return to the Forest, a document film narrated by Star Trek actor William Shatner. So, on this day, we take the pledge and commitment to help protect elephants by raising awareness about the difficult conditions they experience. Save the Elephants is a UK-registered charity based in Kenya and was founded in September 1993 by Ian Douglas Hammond. The Save the Elephants Foundation works to secure the future of elephants. So create awareness, share useful information about saving the elephants. And you can join sensitization campaigns to inform general public about the need to help save endangered populations. Help discourage the poaching of elephants by not buying any ivory merchandise. If there are no demands for elephant tusks, then poachers won't have a market. Support organizations that are working to stop the illegal poaching and trade of ivory and other wildlife products you can help by donating to their cause or by volunteering. Elephants help to shape ecosystems. Elephants are essential for supporting ecosystems, are considered a core species for the role they play. The years of African elephants are much bigger than Asian elephants. Elephant tusks are enlarged incisor teeth that first appear when elephants are about two years old. About 90% of the African elephants have been wiped out in the previous century due to the ivory trade. And an elephant skin is up to 1.6 inches thick in most of the places, and they have a very thick skin. It helps to stop the illegal wildlife elephant trade. We get a chance to play our part in stopping the illegal wildlife elephant trade. We support community scouts, rangers, sniffer dogs, and wildlife trading monitoring networks to deter poachers and cut out the demand from would-be buyers. We create awareness about the predicament of elephants. We also help to discourage the public from purchasing items made of ivory by encouraging people to donate to the Save the Elephants movement. We can help protect them. Fundraising events are also organized to help protect remaining estimated 4,97,000 elephants in the world. So let's save these magnificent genes which are very much crucial to our ecosystem. So today is also commemorated as day uh, of the mushroom in US, honors all things fungi, the, these fleshy spore-bearing fruity body of a fungus, which can grow anywhere above ground, on soil, or its food source is known as a mushroom. The white button mushroom, which is grown, is the standard fungus to be called a mushroom. Therefore, fungi with the stem cap and gills on the underside of their cap are those to which the term mushroom is frequently applied. The name mushroom is also relevant to describing the fleshy, fruiting bodies of other ascomyxota, because it is used to describe a range of different gill fungi that may or may not have a stem. 
Since their first appearance in the early European communities, it is generally assumed that people have been gathering mushrooms since the beginning of time, possibly even in prehistoric times. Truffles and other types of mushrooms were prized in classical Greece and Rome. So there is a proof that various cultures, including the ancient Greeks, the Mayans and the Chinese and the Vikings, among the others, used halogenic mushrooms. Humans now consume edible mushrooms regularly, which has been greatly boosted the agricultural and agroeconomic development of the areas where they are grown. Around half of all farm edible mushrooms are produced in China, which also accounts for six pounds of yearly mushroom consumption per person among the world's 1.4 billion inhabitants. With an estimated of 1,94,000 tons of yearly edible mushroom exports, Poland was the leading exporters of mushrooms in 2014. So some mushrooms taste good and are safe for human consumption. It's a good idea to go to mushroom hunting on this day. And depending on the variety of variables, you can sometimes find mushrooms in your yard or the woods. Consume some mushrooms when used as culinary garnish. Several edible mushrooms are quite a delicacy and also nutritious. Similar to human beings breathe, mushrooms take oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. The fruiting body of the mycelium, not the mushroom, is the primary part. Some mushrooms taste good and are safe for human consumption and are edible. In terms of producing edible mushrooms, China leads the world, followed by Japan and the United States. Mushroom spores can survive the radiation and vacuum in space. Some, if not most, mushrooms are edible. Just one more source of food for us humans. Edible mushrooms are actually tasty as well. And they definitely make a good vegan snack. Mushrooms are fungi. And as such, their consumption is healthy. Today is also commemorated as Go Fly Kite Day in United States. It does not always literally mean you should go and fly a kite. It is an idiom that is used when you want someone to go away or leave you alone. This is because telling someone to go fly a kite requires them to do so. The phrase initially appeared in 1940s and remained popular for several decades after the national festival is taken to indicate that individuals should go fly a kite instead of telling someone to leave. A kite is a light frame wrapped in a plastic paper or paper or fabric generally with a stabilizing tail and intended to be flown at the end of a long string in the air. Kites are supposed to have originated in Shandong, China's eastern mode province and were spread across Asia by traders who transported them to India and then to Korea. In various locations, unique kite shapes evolved as well as various cultural goals for flying them. Kites made of bamboo covered with silk and paper were commonly in the early days. In 1295, BC European travel Marco Polo wrote about kites and how to fly them. Kites had become popular in the children's toys by the 16th century, thanks to the books and literature that popularized them. Eventually, kites were used for scientific research. Alexander Wilson, a Scottish meteorologist, used a kite-mounted thermometer to measure air temperature at 3,000 feet in 1749. In 1752, 
Benjamin Franklin used a kite to demonstrate that lightning is electricity. When the Bright brothers were developing the first airplane in the late 1800s, they used kites for their study. New kite designs began to take flight in the first half of the 20th century. For millennia, kites have been used to ward off evil, send messages, raise banners, represent the gods and tour natural phenomena, drop propaganda leaflets, propel craft, spy on advertisers, photograph the earth, broadcast radio signals, measure the weather, or transport passengers into the sky and catch fish. Kites are currently flown for sport and enjoyment as well as a traditional form of artistic expression. The kite was the first aircraft to take to the air and it was served as a forerunner to manned flights. So the act of flying a kite is called pity. A kite will not fly if the tail is too long or too heavy. So kites will always need wings to fly. So making a kite is often more enjoyable than purchasing one. There are different types of kites to make and many various techniques to make them. But the most essential thing is to have fun, having fun while making one. So you there might be a kite club in your area, and if there isn't, look into international options. You can join a kite club and you will find it more enjoyable. Airplanes are just big kites or the development of kites. The fastest kite speed was 193 kilometers per hour. The longest kite was 3,394 feet in 1760. Kites were banned in Japan as it was considered insulting, uh, insulting to the principles of Shinto religion. Kites were used to deliver letters during the American Civil War. And it is a lot more enjoyable than a tip period. It is stress relieving sports that can be done outside, and it's ideal to do it with a handful of to make it more enjoyable. One of the best things about flying kites is that it's something about both adults and children can enjoy together. The whole family can fly kites together on this day to strengthen their bond. There are different ways to make a kite and you can express your creativity. Today is also commemorated as a Good Deeds Day. An initiative seeks to promote people giving back to their community. However, they can. You can volunteer, donate to charity or help people in your area, whichever way you see fit. The beauty of Good Deeds is that there is no set uh, way to celebrate. The goal is to help others and do good for your community, fostering a sense of kindness, and compassion around us. Acts of charity are never forgotten by their respect. So spread the love on this day. Today is also commemorated as National Bean Counter Day. And is a day specially set aside to give accountants and other financial experts collectively called bean counters. Their much desired break and honor for all the important work they do for the benefit of their clients.
Today is also National Health Care Decisions Day in US. Are you aware that there are times you might need to make some decisions about your health care, but be incapacitated to make them? So this day is set aside to help you take care of their potential situations ahead of time. It is day for patients or health workers, health care receivers. To make known to health professionals that the kind of adequate care they wish to receive and have those wishes respected and met. Across the country, healthcare facilities participate as flagship venues for public engagement. Other participating facilities and organizations have their own physical spaces engaging. The one that lacks physical spaces work in partnership with others or at non-healthcare avenues like supermarkets, pharmacies, libraries, etc. to support the initiative. So this day is inclusive and brings a variety of players in the larger healthcare, legal and religious community together to work on a project that is common for the benefits of patients, families, and providers. These entities work together to ensure the availability of information, opportunity, and access needed to document healthcare decisions. Nathan Kotkam continues to be involved in uh, national health decisions and provide leadership by ensuring the maintenance of the high quality resources and support for the community. So an advance directive is a legal document that explains how you want medical decisions about you to be made if you are unstable to make decisions yourself. So basic health care services refer to a range of services, including and following usual physician services, laboratory, x-ray, hospitalization, emergency and preventive services and out of area coverage. The healthcare system offers four broad types of services, health, promotion, disease, prevention, Make use of resources and materials to help you think through the healthcare wishes. Healthcare decisions should not just be end-of-life issues. 
should include mental health issues, blood transfusions, amputations, and when the affected person is incapable of making sound decisions. Educate and encourage other people on the importance of making health decisions time. You could be saving a life in doing so. Technology plays a vital role through health information technology involving both computer hardware and software. Healthcare information, data, and knowledge is effectively stored. Healthcare industry includes primary care, the work of healthcare professionals who act as the first point of consultation for all patients, secondary care, necessary treatment for a short period, tertiary care, specialized consultative care, usually for inpatients, and quaternary care, extension of the tertiary care. So healthcare systems generally have five primary methods of funding system general taxation, and social health, insurance. And the quality and quality Quantity of many healthcare interventions are improved through scientific research results. So science plays a huge role. And healthcare systems generally have a primary uh, methods of funding, like general taxation, social health insurance, out-of-pocket pay systems, voluntary or private health insurance, and donations to health chat.
आ काय रे कुठं म्हणाय द्या इथं बा बर जा बा नाही लगी बा बा इथं बा बाय नाही लगी इथं नाही काय नाही बाय नाही बाय नाही बाय नाही बाय नाही लगी बाय नाही बाय नाही बाय नाही बाय नाही बाय नाही इथं 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 बा ना गंभीर सिंह सर नहीं गंभीर सिंह सर this was a recent indian uh, documentary that has received oscar award and it portrays the emotions and the connect uh, between man and animal a wonderful uh, documentary to be watched and very much appreciated across the world எதாச்சும் விளையாடு கிட்ட அது போட்டு கொடுக்கலனா அது கொஞ்சம் அத எடுத்து கொடுத்தா அது விளையாடும் அப்ப அந்த டைம்ல வந்து நாங்களும் கொஞ்சம் அதுக்கு நல்ல முறை அது பாஸ் ஆ ஒரு பாஸ் கொடுக்கணும் பாஸ் ஆனனா நாங்க ஒரு குழந்தைங்க எடுத்து வளத்துற மாதிரி தான் காணே தீர்த்த காலியே தே காணே நெத்து கிய காணே சஞ்சனா மூறாள் ஓத ரொம்ப கண்ணுக்கு கொத்திலதவாரு கண் கணதவாரு காடு ஓதாரு காடு ஒழைக்கு கொட்டு வகி ஆயினி நோடிதாரு ஒப்ப நோய் கை முட்டிதானு கை முட்டுட்டு இது ஆ ஓ வா நம்பா இஞ்சொப்ப நோய்க்கு கீ முட்டிதானு கீ முட்டி நோட்டி இது முற மாதிரி இதெல்லாம் அந்த எழுதானு இன்னொப்ப நோய்க்கு பால் முட்டுட்டு இது பல்கடி பல்கடி மாதிரி இது அந்த எழுதானு 
அடுத்தவர்தார் ஆணி தோட்டம் ஒடுத்தாது மரம் முறுத்தாது கொந்தாதுன்னு எழுதாரு அதெல்லாம் காணி ஆணி கூட இருவருக்கு நாங்கள்கிட்ட குத்திடுதே ஆணி எப்பட்டி பாசம் தேடி ஆணி எப்பட்டி பாசம் இதழி கூடி ஆணிக்கு நாங்கள் பாசம் கூட்டல் ஆணி நாங்கள் பாசம் இதது நோடு நாங்கள் ரகு அம்மனோடு ஏச பாசம் இதுதே Bah the elephant whispers really lets viewers understand both elephants and human carers and i wanted to really get the audience to stop seeing elephants as the other and to start seeing them as one of us I was driving on my way back from Uti to Bangalore to pack my things and move back to my hometown in Uti and that's when I first met Raghu he was walking alongside Bowman and they were walking on the side of the road and going down to the river for a bath and I was hanging out of the car so excited to see this young little calf and at that point Bowman beckoned to me he saw my curiosity towards this young calf and invited me to go with them so I pulled my car over to the side and I jumped out and i went and joined them for this bath in the river and i really saw this beautiful bond that was there i was able to get into the river with ragu and scrubbed him and spent a whole lot of time so that's how this documentary came into being it's a beautiful journey that i was on for the past 5 years and ragu been an orphan young elephant it brought me to the question about why was he orphaned and that sort of brought this bitter sweet beginning to the story because the asian elephant is losing its habitat at a really rapid pace due to encroachment and climate change and that in turn was something that was very prominent in a country like india which is developing at such a rapid pace so roughly there are around 35000 to 40000 elephants left in india at this point and across the world its situation is really grim we filmed ragu and woman and belly in this beautiful footage but then What happened is on the last day of my shoot from that section Amu came in and she was an abandoned calf which sort of brought me back to the problem that the Asian elephants are going through right now so it just showed how frequent and stressed on the fact that this is a current problem Amu was immediately given to Bowman and Belly and that's when this entire family dynamic opened up on a whole different level and how they split the two elephants and their love blossom so i think it's just a beautiful journey that you document over time and the other core important point that i wanted to focus on is the importance of indigenous people and their in-depth ancient knowledge and respect for the land that they live on who have lived and cared for the elephants for centuries this is my debut film i started out being a documentary photographer primarily focused on natural history and social documentary and that love sort of just turned into me being a camera woman my journey of exploration involves capturing the diversity of cultures and tribes across the world i just like focusing on solutions and building greater awareness and a sense of responsibility towards environmental concerns while also showcasing beautiful stories of conservation that instill hope Bowman Belly Amun Ragu just have this beautiful bond together 
and I felt like that was a really good space to start to showcase the sacred bond between man and animal. The Elephant Whisperers just really offers a beam of hope of mutual respect and cooperation and a way forward through coexistence. So take time and do watch this wonderful uh, documentary. And there are various other documentaries where you can, uh, you know, watch and uh, explore how magnificent uh, the beauty species are these elephants. And it's uh, everyone's responsibility to save the fellow species, fellow beings. Otherwise, it's soon going to be a disaster for everyone. And we'll just watch one more documentary. In short. Legacy Foundation. We are an elephant foundation set up from the heart by passionate animal lovers with many years of experience in the field. Here we care for old elephants. Our elephants walk freely in nature, grazing as they would in the wild, picking food from a variety of wild plants in this green tropical environment. They are not forced to participate in any activities that could cause stress to them. We want to be an example of the ethical change in the animal tourism industry and offer a completely hands-off experience for our visitors, which makes for happy elephants in a stress-free environment. Our goal is to let our elephants live and interact in the most natural way, roaming around freely. Physical human contact will be limited to our mahouts only. Mahouts are the elephant caretakers. Elephants are wild animals and should not be treated as pets. Join us in our passion and make a difference. Let elephants simply be elephants. We have partnered with the Legacy River Kwai Resort. Located on the bank of the River Kwai Noi, it serves as a quiet, green, an ideal venue for rest and relaxation. The exotic land, covered in large trees with wildlife such as squirrels, birds and geckos, spans a total of 48 hectares. With our foundation, we look after the well-being of our elephants and in harmonious collaboration with the Legacy River Kwai Resort, the well-being of our guests will be taken care of as well. one caretaker, who is called a mahout. Most mahouts are of ethnic minorities. The origin of our mahouts are of the Karen tribe. At Sambu Legacy Foundation, 
Our mahouts are our heroes. They treat the elephants with respect, therefore we treat them with respect. Elephants are the symbol of Thailand. In the past, elephants were taken from the wild to be used in the war and later on in the logging industry. After logging was banned in Thailand, they were mainly used in the entertainment industry. This use of elephants in the entertainment industry is still ongoing. One of the reasons we started this foundation is to save elephants from a life full of stress due to having to perform unnatural tasks. Nowadays, most people are aware that shows with and riding on elephants are not ethical. That is why in recent years a lot of sanctuaries have opened. Although most sanctuaries are still using the elephants for the tourist entertainment. The mass elephant tourism and the presence of big crowds trying to get the perfect selfie while washing the elephants is still causing the elephants to suffer. Stress is not only humans' biggest health problem, it goes the same for animals. It's on every person's bucket list to touch and feed the elephants without any consideration that for you it might be your once in a lifetime experience but the elephant has to live through this seven days a week 365 days per year for the rest of its life what most people are unaware of is that for a lot of sanctuaries their main focus is making money and not the well-being of the elephants. At Sambu Legacy Foundation, one of our main goals is to educate and raise awareness. Education is the most powerful tool which we can use to change the world. Our vision for now and the future is to educate as many people as possible, especially children as they are the future. We aim to raise awareness and positive change. In this moment, we work together with people of our local community. And our vision for the future is to evolve many more. We strive to rescue more elephants from a life full of stress. And one day, we want to have our own healthcare center for old and sick elephants with our own veterinarian. We have started to work together with other animal welfare organizations for support and to learn from each other. Together we stand strong. We are proud to be a transparent organization that practices open, honest and clear communication. As a non-for-profit organization, we are transparent about the flow of money going in and out of the organization and our practices around that. Thank you for choosing to visit Sambu Legacy Foundation. Thank you for your support. We hope you enjoy your experience and we would love for you to spread the word to your family and friends. Together, 
We can speak for those who have no voice. You have the power to make a difference. Let's not waste time. Let's take some action. So on this day, it's a wonderful opportunity to remember these magnificent days and watch some videos to learn more about elephants. Recently, a movie also came on an elephant uh, where the elephant corridor was uh, occupied in the mid of the forest and uh, you know their access to the water source, only water source was limited by an a uh, real estate giant hospitality industry where there, there was a wall that was uh, built by the business uh, entity and you know it was very well portrayed how the elephants were struggling without water and entire herd of elephants were red and again so a lot of advocacy that took place and uh, you know, finally, the prime minister has to stop that project at a level. So it involves, you know, even Supreme Court has to involve. So we have to understand that this planet is not just ours. It, this planet belongs to entire 8 billion plus species, including us. But we are exploiting them and also causing 
to the extinction of the entire species uh, which no species are you know doing that so it's a high time we realize what we are doing to ourselves and our planet and let's be conscious and live in harmony with the other species so today is also national library day in us and it's a chance to be thankful for all the knowledge that librarian possess and also as book slingers who spend all the day cataloging and researching but librarians now nowadays known as information scientists play a major role or much more important role from children's story time to literacy classes libraries offer a wealth of free public resources trained in library science professional library librarians work with complex cataloging systems to organize books making purchasing decisions for the library lies with local schools and universities organize events and programming teach classes and many more their role is constantly evolving to adapt to new technology and social needs so stereotyped in pop culture as be spectacle older ladies who constantly shush their teen patrons librarians are dedicated professionals who perform a variety of tasks to keep libraries running organize programming and update their collections the first large libraries in the west in the us were most privately owned and required entry fees or paid membership to gain access the concept of free libraries took hold by late 1800s in the west in the early 18 uh, 20th century after mabel devy standardized library cataloging with his devy decimal system and other practices so public libraries rapidly expanded with thousands of new branches across the country by 1900s the scope of libraries also expanded with many offering reference departments and interlibrary loans during the great depression libraries served as a lifeline for struggling families seeking a cozy refuge and free entertainment today libraries function as so much as more repositories of knowledge to keep up with the changing technology library offerings now include audio books e-reader materials free computer skills classes and access to free online resources many public libraries offer language and citizenship classes access to useful tools and technologies like 3d printers and computers and free workshops on varieties of hobbies and life skills they provide a quiet shelter during hot or rainy days at no cost and they serve as a safe welcoming hangout for children and teens and we have national librarian day which is observed on april 16th in us in india also we observe a uh, national librarian day and library day as well so most librarians have a masters degree in library science in india we also see a uh, bachelors with uh, library science who are working as uh, in libraries so local libraries are hubs of learning and socializing that house so much more books at most libraries you can access many other free services including internet access language learning classes skill sharing music and video streaming and legal advice and also commemorative lectures and guest lectures on research and various related topics so when was the last time you went to the library many public libraries are located in beautiful historic buildings find yours today and take membership in libraries so that it will help them to uh, keep up their budgets and also do contribute donate your books after you have read it or if you have huge pile of books or you can just lend your books or uh, you know give it to libraries so that they have good collection which are mostly useful for others they can come and refer 
and thank a local librarian for their service and let them know it's appreciated. And check your shelves or buy a couple of new books to donate to the library collection. In 2019, the average American adult took 10.5 trips to the public library and, and only five to a movie theater. So public libraries serve more customers than movie theaters in US. The US Library of Congress is the world's largest library housing 168 million items. Contrary to the belief that all libraries require silence, the Tikurlia Library in Vanta, Finland is equipped with a soundproof karaoke room to help residents who are looking for work, the New York Public Library lets members check out ties, briefcases, and other accessories to spruce up their outfit for a job interview. So there are more than 60,000 16,000 public libraries, central libraries, and branch libraries in the US. That's more than McDonald's locations. So librarians fulfill many important social functions but we don't often recognize the breadth of their service. Public libraries are crucial service in an increasingly privatized world. National Library Day celebrates these public spaces that contribute to the overall well-being of the society. Today is also Teach Your Daughters Volunteer Day. A supportive community or neighborhood can be created by families working together to shape a caring and understanding environment in which all families can prosper in a spirit of partnership. Volunteering may not be a familiar concept to your child, but even the smallest of the child can be taught the sense of appreciation and generosity as they grow older and the importance of volunteering and making contributions. Philanthropy can take form of them donating their time or allocating a portion of their allowance to the causes that they believe in and support. Some suggestions for getting your daughter involved is community activities. Today is also National Orchard Day in US. So there are, uh, these orchids are one of the two largest families of flowering plants. Uh, with between 21,950 and 26,049 currently accepted species. So wide range of orchids we have. They are colorful, beautiful, give off good fragrance and grow in abundance across the world. And the day is connected with honoring, cherishing the memory of loved ones and indeed dear to our hearts with orchids. And today is also National Reveal the Genius Within Day in US. And it's a day for people to connect and share ideas on the issues that affect everyone. To ensure everyone was able to share their ideas and reveal their genius led to a dream week, a 12 day summit where people come together, discuss issues that concern humanity. And today is also wear pyjamas to work day in US. So it's becoming naturally and virally popular. Even celebrities have spotted rocking sleepwear while out and about. So unless, of course, you are lucky enough to work from home, get cozy and comfortable in your office chair while dreaming about cashing your tax refund check that is you are among those actually receiving money. So with this, we conclude today's commemoration. And we thank everyone for joining us. And we request everyone to quickly fill up the feedback form, which is being shared in the form of uh, polls. And also we request everyone to register daily for the international webinar series, which is mandatory for the certification criteria. Registration link has been shared in the chat box. You can keep it open. Later on, you can fill. 
the registration form remains the same. So you can just bookmark it and daily you can open, register before attending or after attending immediately on the same day. And now quickly fill up the feedback form in Zoom poll because once the meeting ends, you lose access to this. Zoom feedback form. Thank you everyone for joining us. And see you all tomorrow at the same time. And there is a coming up conference on uh, occasion of World Earth Day on April 22nd. So this year, the theme for the World Earth Day is invest in our planet. So it may be in the form of time efforts. So we request everyone to register and also participate. And if you have any ideas or if you have anything to share through scientific presentation or uh, oral presentation, you are welcome to share your details and register. Uh, registration form is safe for both participation and presentation. You just need to share your details additional. Feedback form has been shared in the Zoom platform in the form of polls. Chat box only registration form link has been shared. There is no external feedback form that can be shared in chat box. So we request everyone to fill the Zoom feedback form in the form of polls. If you have accidentally closed, there will be an option in the menu. You can see the polls option. You can click it, click on it, or uh, you can just uh, log off and log in, and you can see the polls option. Otherwise, you can update your uh, app and join back again.
we have shared the registration form for uh, international conference on world earth day in the chat box you can circulate among your circles and uh, use this wonderful opportunity to make presentations and also participation and one more important announcement uh, for everyone uh, soon you will also receive an email those who have presented as part of azadi kamrut mahotsav we have been organizing uh, various events as part of uh, america uh, azadi kamrut mahotsav so uh, those who have already presented can publish your papers you can start sending your papers and we are preparing the final publication so soon uh, you will get the opportunity to get published so further details will be provided soon thank you everyone take care good night